In this section, we discuss the derivatives of the inverse trig functions. So we'll start with a brief, very brief, review of those inverse trig functions. And we'll begin with a, again, very brief review of inverses in general. Definition. Given a function f of x, the inverse of that function is another function written as f with a negative one in its subscript, such that when you compose f with its inverse, the two functions undo one another. For example, f of x equals x cubed has as its inverse the cubed root of x. Because if you compose these, in either direction, the cubed root cubed equals x, and the cubed root of x cubed also equals x. Now, not every function has an inverse. Based on what you see here, for example, you might guess the following that the function x squared has as its inverse the square root of x. And that's a natural thing to think, but it's wrong. The square root of x squared is not x. This function and this function do not undo one another. The square root of x squared is the absolute value of x, not x. This function has no inverse. To see why that should be true, consider two and negative two under this function. Both of these numbers squared equals four. Now informally, what taking the inverse does is it takes a diagram like this and it reverses the direction 
fraction of the arrows. If F takes two to four, then F inverse takes four to two. And if F takes negative two to four, F inverse takes four to negative two. We can't have a function, though, that takes four to two different numbers. The requirement of a function is that it takes inputs and uniquely maps them to outputs. So this function has no inverse. And that happened because two and negative two were being mapped to the same number. Or at least that's the example I gave. It's also true that, you know, three and negative three are mapped to the same number. Sorry if you just noticed an interruption. Someone was knocking at my door. I was saying that these are both mapped to nine and the inverse would have to reverse both of those arrows and send one input to two different outputs. And if that happens, you don't have a function. A function is one to one. If the situation I just described doesn't happen, the only way that two outputs can be equal is if the inputs are equal. So as an example of a function that is not one to one, well, we just saw such an example f of x equals x squared is not one to one because, for example, f of two equals four and f of negative two also equals four. So these out Puts are the same. To be one to one, these inputs would have to be the same, which they are clearly not. Another example that is not one to one is f of x equals the sign of x. f of zero equals zero f of pi also equals zero. And of course, zero is not 
quarter pie. As a matter of fact, None of the six standard trig functions are one, two, one. And that's unfortunate because of the following theorem. A function has an inverse if and only if it is one, two, one. So it wasn't a coincidence that when we gave x squared as an example of a function that didn't have an inverse, we then later gave it as an example of a function that is not one to one, those are the same thing. A function has an inverse if and only if, it is one to one. That is unfortunate because as a corollary, the trig functions have no inverses. Why does that matter to us? Well, how do we solve equations involving trig functions? For example, how do we solve the sine of x equals 0.7? Well, if the sine of x had an inverse, maybe just to pick something completely at random, maybe we'll say that if the sine of x had an inverse, which we were calling the arc sine of x, then if you had an equality like that, and you wanted to solve it, you could simply take the arc sign of both sides of the equality and solve for x that way. So it's a real shame then that since the sine function doesn't have an inverse, there can't be any such function. Well, obviously I'm being facetious. You should have taken some kind of trigonometry as a prerequisite for this course, and you'll have seen that there is a function called the arc sine that is a sort of the inverse of the sine.
In the next video, we'll remind ourselves how we get around this fundamental difficulty, that trig functions have no inverses, and yet we really need them to if we're going to solve equalities involving the trig function. Actions.